hello guys and gals, me Mudahar and I am angry. Why are <laughs> all of these fucking influencers doing this, dude? Oh, I want to bring attention to a scheme that has been growing in popularity amongst YouTubers. The hottest, newest coin of 2021 is Dink Coin. Save the kids coin. Milk token Stanley nipple token. I know I haven't posted in a while. Guys, this has gone so beyond social media drama at this point. Like, there's legal implications for these guys. Okay, the Aren't you guys supposed to be playing video games? <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that what, That's great. Yeah. How, how, did you, this, how did this whole thing start? How did it end up here? Basically, because of me, straight up, I'm not going to lie to you guys, we're all being kicked out. I'm sorry. No way. Yeah, bro. Um, like everyone but me, right? No, t what? <laughs> if there's one thing YouTubers love, it's delivering consistently quality content to their adoringly dedicated audiences. Oh wait, no, it's money. At this point, the term influencer may as well just be synonymous with forcing thousands of fans to wait outside in the California heat as you charge them $70 for condoms. Right, Tana? <laughs> I give. And I give, and I give, and it's just like, I never get. I mean, after locking a fake wedding with Jake Paul behind a $50 paywall, who else to trust with your finances than a stand-up gal like Tana Mongoose? And I looked at my teacher and I go, you're a bitch! And she was like, oh, and all the parents were like, oh. <laughs> Which is why it makes total sense for Tana to promote only the most lucrative and promising cryptocurrencies on the market, Titscoin. A coin she created herself with the aim of putting money into your pocket, or something along those lines. Do you believe my ownership in Titscoin just bought me this beautiful Rolls Royce? Get yours now. Let's see what the coin is worth now, shall we? Oh, oh, hey, that's... A big drop. So unless you bought in here and sold off exactly here, something tells me you aren't exactly pushing a Rolls Royce right now. But since early 2021, it seems just about every influencer and celebrity in the book has developed a keen sense for the crypto market. Nickel is an ERC-20 token on the Ethereum blockchain, including deflationary and frictionless yield mechanics. Begging the question of what does someone like Kim Kardashian, who once wore mirrored sunglasses to oppose Poker game know about the complicated world of trading Ethereum Max. Well, that's something I want to figure out today. But just in case you're new to any of this, I think it's best if we start from the beginning. Now to a wild ride on Wall Street that seems to have just come right out of the blue this morning. With all this wadding by Wall Street, it's making me sick. Several large hedge funds were severely wounded in the process. There's nothing normal about what you're seeing when it comes to this stock right now. Crazy. They call this insane 700% this month. A GameStop is worth over 10 billion dollars at last count. Balance here, we don't know where they're doing, but I'm not, I actually think, uh, Herb, that they're smarter than we think. After hemorrhaging sales for the past decade and having its corpse pissed on by a literal plague, the declining game retailer GameStop took an unexpected turn when its stock value skyrocketed to a whopping record of $487 per share in January of 2021. After being dead in the water for the past however many years, no analyst could have ever seen this coming. So why did it happen? Now, I'm no expert when it comes to stocks or money in general for that matter. I just dropped 124 bucks on Kanye merch for an album that isn't even out yet. But I do know that when a company is destined to fail, there will be those who try and make a little money on the way out. Which is exactly what happened with GameStop. Powerful Wall Street hedge funds filled with former frat guys were essentially betting on GameStop's inevitable failure. They were shorting it. To put it in the most simple terms possible, the more money the company lost, the more money went into the pockets of conniving Wall Street investors. It happens constantly, only this time. A third party happened to intervene. 
Reddit. A new generation of investors using their phones. Fueled by the Wall Street Bets group on oh, Reddit. They say it's been a wake up call, uh, in their words. Um, the investment subreddit Wall Street Bets quickly picked up on just how much shorting was going on. Not just with GameStop, but AMC Theaters and Blackberry, to name a few more. That's when they realized just how much chaos they could cause if they collectively chose to pump these failing companies higher in value. So the 3 million Redditor army quickly began buying up as many shares as possible, causing the markets to implode, turning a decent profit, and fucking over greedy hedge funds in the process. It's beautiful, really. I can't even be mad. Suddenly, Discord moderators from all over the country were able to spoil their hopefully of-age kittens with illustrious earnings pocketed from pumping stocks like Nokia. But seeing so many elite Wall Street crooks crying on national television made it all worth it. I got a great idea. Ban social networks to talk about buying short stocks. Uh, right, that's, that's their next <laughs> move, right? If you logged on to anything that day, you'd see regular investors, kids even, actually getting rich off stocks at the expense of powerful entities. And the sooner you got on board, the bigger return you made. I have a kid who bought a house. He had a, he made $50,000 and bought a house. Leaving everyone in the nearby vicinity on the hunt for the next big meme stock to get behind. And I have a feeling you know what they landed on. Well, now the Doge father. Uh, okay, Doge father. <laughs> Created as a joke in 2013, the cryptocurrency Dogecoin surged nearly 800% after Tesla CEO Elon King of the Neckbeards Musk tweeted this image on January 28th, 2021. Maybe out of spite for Bitcoin or just to have some market manipulation fun, Elon quickly became the face of the Doge movement. As evident by the replies to any of his tweets. By the way, if anyone believes in Elon after he clowned everyone on Doge, like you're a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> that guy completely took your money. Oh, yeah. He fucking owned you. Believe it or not, I actually owned a tiny bit of Doge myself at the very beginning of the year until selling it before the peak of 7 cents, which later rose to a grand 70 cents in May. So I can't... If I had held my original investment, I'd be rich. But it, it's cool. It's fine. I'm, I'm not mad at all. Like, why, why, why do you ask? But then again, if the value of an entire currency can be leveled by a single tweet from Grimes' husband, you probably shouldn't be pouring your life savings into it. All that to say that, admittedly, putting money into Dogecoin or any other crypto that does not contain actual utility is more or less just gambling. Which isn't bad on its own, but being aware of this reality is crucial so you don't make any super brash decisions that hurt you financially. The spontaneous burst of success from a coin like Doge was a rare event, a fluke that left early investors rich and gave everyone else a case of FOMO, the fear of missing out in the future. Could lightning really strike twice? What if something like Doge happens again? That is exactly the question many celebrities and influencers have been quick to take advantage of. It's early. If it is a Ponzi, get in on the ground floor. But I'll tell you what isn't a scam. The incredibly generous deal you can get with the Atlas VPN. Ever get annoyed at the hundreds of shows and movies that are locked out of your country's Netflix? I know I do. But thanks to Atlas VPN, you can bypass those pesky geo restrictions and instantly access shows like Rick and Morty, The Office, Cowboy Bebop, or if you're a fan of bad television, Friends. Atlas VPN basically hides your virtual location and encrypts all of your data, making for an overall more secure browsing experience. By inserting your email address, Atlas will scan the internet to see if you've ended up on any recorded data breaches or data dumps that include emails, names, passwords, or other sensitive information. Enabling notifications with Atlas ensures that you are aware of such incidents and gives you a heads up to change your passwords before anyone has a chance of stealing your accounts. Currently, Atlas VPN is running 
a huge discount on their three year deal for just $139 per month with a 30 day money back guarantee. The deal won't last long though, so be sure and check it out by clicking the link in the description box or pinned comment down below. In my opinion, it's an extremely useful and important tool to have, and with it being a grand 86% off right now, I can't think of a better deal to take advantage of. Click the link and join over 5 million happy users today. Massive thanks to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this one and helping out with the channel. Now to the British guy. Move over Dogecoin, which featured the face of a Shiba Inu dog. Now there's Catcoin, which was thought up by no one other than Carol Baskin. It's not a currency. We call it a currency. That's right. The owner of Big Cat Rescue, who found fame through Netflix's Tiger King, is getting into the crypto craze. <laughs> So remember that painfully unlikable character from Tiger King? No, the other one. No, the other one. The other one. There we go. Carol Baskin, who absolutely did not and would never dream of killing her husband, has taken a rather surprising plunge into the crypto space with her own spin on Dogecoin, aptly dubbed Catcoin. Or Scatcoin, as I keep reading it. Not the most genius marketing, but that's to be expected considering everything about this project seems about as rushed and unplanned as possible. I'm sure it's all just a coincidence that Catcoin hit the market only three days before Doge was expected to reach record highs thanks to Elon's SNL performance. Big Cat Rescue says it will also launch non-fungible tokens in the next two weeks, with future plans including a Big Cat Metaverse for virtual visits with the cats. With virtual visits? Can you not already watch live streams of tigers online for free? You know what? Never mind. At least the NFTs sound promising. You know, hopefully we get to see more of this oddly sexual furry art style in the future. <laughs> gonna make me act up. But what about any of this makes it a scam? Maybe Carol actually has hopes of her own cat coin going to the moon one day. Obviously not today, as it's been hitting record lows since May 19th. Make sure you know that you can lose money. Yeah, no fucking kidding. But as stated in an interview with CNN, Carol is still deeply concerned about the volume of US dollars that are being printed and distributed with nothing to back them up. Which is a lot of words for a former Dancing with the Stars contestant but still actually pretty sound reasoning on its face. With every crypto transaction being sent and received through the extremely secure digital ledger, some say blockchain technology may actually reimagine the way we use money. The need for banks may one day be a thing of the past, but I can promise you this, the future of finance will hardly be paved by a project like Scatcoin. Tokens like Bitcoin and Ethereum are always going to reign supreme thanks to their high volume and name recognition not to mention the slew of real life international projects they've already been attached to for years. So I wouldn't exactly be banking on some random fringe token spontaneously conjured up by a hacked TV star. Speaking of, Kanye West's wife or ex-wife, or new wife, I have no idea anymore. But I can't say I see anything wrong with Kim K sharing her abundant crypto wisdom with a following of 248 million? Only a slight responsibility there, you think? But at least she's out here promoting one of the more mainstream tokens, Ethereum Max. What the fuck is Ethereum Max? Okay, so it's literally just a blatant scam. <laughs> Not to be confused with the more popular coin, Ethereum. Ethereum Max is only named that so people get confused and think the two are somehow associated when they aren't. In fact, according to Coindesk, Ethereum Max requires very little technical skill to make, which is alarming enough on its own, but you really think Kim Kardashian's following of millennial white women know that? They're just gonna take her endorsement at face value because she's Kim Kardashian. A little billionaire whose word will naturally be placed on a pedestal just by proxy of being Kim Kardashian. This is not financial advice. <laughs> Look, okay, online nothing ever good comes after those words. <laughs> I wonder who exactly these friends of hers are and how much they must be paying her for this story post? Because the way this thing reads, there's no way there wasn't a fat wad of cash behind it. In reality, it's difficult for crypto experts to say how a project like Ethereum 
Emacs even works. Both on account of how new it is and how the Emacs website only contains intentionally vague buzzwords under the community perks tab. See, they don't show you the whole graph either, right? Like, this looks fine until you go to the all time section and oh, hey, it's worthless. And it's not like they're the most transparent about the developers or the team behind this project either. Another glaring red flag to take note of. Because with less faces attached to the project, the less chance of scrutiny and potential blowback down the line. The only faces I can see are those of household names like Kim K and Floyd Mayweather, who already scammed about a million people into paying for a fake boxing match with the guy from Law and Order. Legalized bank robbery. Yeah, <laughs> can't argue there. These are people being paid anywhere from six to seven figures per sponsorship based on previous reports. I mean, Floyd didn't exactly disclose he was being paid for wearing an Emacs shirt, but it wouldn't be the first time he's left out that key detail now, would it? When he was fined over $600,000 by the SEC in 2018 for promoting some random token called Centro, which shockingly turned out to be a fraud. The creator of that little number got locked up for eight years after advertising fake partnerships with Visa and MasterCard, so just keep that in mind when hearing about certain crypto ventures from dudes who spent their entire careers getting socked in the head. Chances aren't many celebrities wouldn't be doing this type of promo if there wasn't something substantial in it for them. A pretty grim prospect when you consider who exactly these people are affecting. Their fans, who are not multi-billionaires. Loyal supporters are being duped into thinking their investment is going to make them rich when really all they're doing is maxing out their losses. <laughs> See what I did? The Ethereum max, maxing out. Never mind. Openly playing with someone's livelihood is just sick, and to be at that level of financial freedom and still have the gall to treat your audience like piggy banks is just grotesque, with some of them being more obvious than others. Alright, moon boys, listen. Now you guys are in the crypto space, and it's the wolf here. What would a good pump and dump scheme be without a literal actual convicted criminal at the forefront? Jordan Belfort, a former Wall Street goon who continues to write off the popularity of his Scorsese film in a last ditch effort to cling onto any sense of remaining relevance he can. You have an oral contract with your management, the Fordham Company. Is that an attempt to hide your income? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I think you can air what you want here out of this interview, it's done. In addition to befriending other non-fraudsters, he's also got a TikTok. If you hate capitalism that much, then why don't you move to Venezuela, but take a piece of fucking bread with you, because you have to wait in line one week to get one. Wow, badass, dude. You ripped families apart in the 90s and continue to fuck over your annoying fans on Twitter via half-baked crypto schemes? The American dream in action. Literally, the very real plot of the movie consisted of Jordan and his team of gargoyles manipulating regular, naive people into buying niche penny stocks they knew full well would underperform and in turn make them rich. He is a genuine con man and has gone to prison for his practices. Yet people will still listen to him on random fucking coins like moon boys moon boys like, what, what even is that dude what's his view about the moon boys now is the time it's just annoying to see otherwise extremely privileged and well-off celebrities so shamelessly jeopardizing the financial states of their fans if it means making a quick buck. But it doesn't just end with giant names like Kim Kardashian. Remember what I was saying earlier about YouTubers? Chilling in my Lambo, stacking crypto! <laughs> How the fuck did we get here? After not posting for an entire year, the notorious doyen heartthrob and blackface enthusiast Bart Baker made his sudden return to Instagram with a jarring music video promotion of the French crypto coin Polydoge. Not to be confused with Dogecoin that everyone and their grandma oh. knows about today. See, just like Ethereum Max, the name Polydoge is derived from a far more successful crypto endeavor. In a sinister attempt to trick the average buyer into thinking this must somehow be related to Dogecoin. It isn't, obviously. And the only thing more disgusting than piggybacking off the success of a coin with a way bigger market cap is duping your remaining handful of fans into thinking it'll grow by a thousand times. And let me tell you, since this video was posted, it hasn't. <laughs> 
But it's not the price alone that determines whether or not a coin is a scam. A big factor includes its volume, or the sum total of actual trades taking place. The volume of a coin is typically a good indicator of how much general interest a project has. The higher the volume, the easier it is to trade and make money. For example, the volume of Bitcoin is around 30 billion, with Ethereum at 23 billion. Even Doge is still sitting around 1 billion today. So to put it simply, a coin with especially low volume is basically worthless regardless of the actual token price. And when we look at Polydoge, a project with barely any information on it whatsoever, it's no surprise the volume is so staggeringly low compared to the billions I just mentioned. Hardly anyone cares about this coin because nobody knows about it. Which is why developers and scammers need influencers. Maybe not Bart Baker specifically, since I can't prove he's been paid to promote Polydoge. But it's at least very clear to see the volume rise on the same day Bart had a popular tweet blasting Elon and promoting the coin in the same breath. The influx in volume is what particularly gives scammers the chance to dump their coins and make a profit. Again, I have no way of proving Bart's involvement in the project or his real intentions here, but to me it's still pretty questionable any way you look at it, as Polydoge has been hitting record lows in recent months. It's certainly not uncommon for giant names to promote potential Ponzi schemes for the sake of obtaining the bag. Okay, you put 40,000 bucks into SafeMoon. You made a big production out of it. I think SafeMoon is down a little bit since then. But uh, where are you on SafeMoon now? I mean, are you, are you ever going to sell? Was that a euphemism? I'm down 50%, Stuart. Not a little bit. I'm down 50%. No, I'm never going to sell. This man has diamond hands, and I said I was doing it for the long term. So it's been a little rocky road, but that's the nature of the beast when you get involved with these type coins. Safe Moon will eventually land on the moon and I'll be there to throw a yacht party when it does, but it's down. Yeah, and it stayed down. <laughs> but the good news is, if you were to ask this guy if he thinks it could be a scam, he wouldn't even lie to you. The answer is Safe Moon. Safe Moon is now in the Dave Portnoy business and vice versa. Why? I don't know fucking why. It could be a Ponzi scheme. I like the word moon because that's where I want to go. I don't think that all these celebrities who make headlines about the crypto market are really helping. You know, Elon Musk sends the thing up and down all over the place. You've done that too. You've made headlines. You are a celebrity and you've made some headlines, but you've whipsawed a lot of investors. I don't think you celebrities saying this kind of thing are doing that much good for the market in the long run. When I made my safe moon, it jumped and then it comes back down. I agree with you that it's not a super long term impact unless you stick with it over the long term. But it turns out safe moon may not be as safe as you think. See, like many of the tokens we have and will continue to discuss today, SafeMoon was developed with one purpose. Scampi, I mean, gamble, gamble. SafeMoon adds nothing to the world. It isn't meant to. Putting $100 into it is like buying a $100 lottery ticket. Sure, it might be fun and the low price may draw you in, but that's where it really gets you. The so-called potential it has to make you rich. All right, so let's say you invest only like $30. Right, so you take that $30 times the current value of this coin right now, and you get about roughly 19 million coins. So let's say this thing goes up to about just one cent, your potential almost $200,000. Now what this TikTok man doesn't tell you is that in order for SafeMoon to reach one penny, that would make the market cap of SafeMoon $6 trillion, triple the entire crypto market. So what sounds like super simple uh, would break crypto. So it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Good to know. But it's not like any of that matters to Dave Porn Toy over here. He's promoting it on Fox News solely so he can move the markets like Elon. I mean, he fucking said it. I think Musk is manipulating the market. And I think you're doing exactly the same thing. I wish I could do it to the degree that Elon does it. I wish I had his power. There's no doubt he's manipulating it. And I wish I could, to the degree he does. Uh Can we just take some time to acknowledge that $40,000 is only worth about 0.03% of Dave Portnoy's entire net worth? So if he loses that, he'll just make it back in a day. I mean, the dude hasn't exactly been coy about losing 700 k on similar ventures in the past. It's almost like the guy who brought us the worst podcast in the world isn't the wealth of knowledge his chud fans think he is. You know goddamn well you gave him chlamydia and you were <laughs> 
going to go up to him and be like, I cannot believe you gave me the clap, you dirty motherfucker. How, how could you do this to me? Why would you do this to me? Wow. And then beautiful. they don't know what to do because if you, I mean, girl, uh, girls, it works. If you follow any rap pages on TikTok, Twitter, or Instagram, you may know a little bit about Aiden Ross, the 20 year old Twitch streamer whose content mostly consists of enthusiastic screaming into a microphone. Despite posting since approximately 2014, Aiden's Twitch saw a rapid growth in early 2020 when he befriended fellow streamer and son of LeBron James, Bronny. By betting thousands of dollars on games of NBA 2K, Aiden quickly grabbed the attention of huge audiences and built his platforms up to a total of 1.85 million subscribers on YouTube, 2.1 million followers on Instagram, and 4.8 million on Twitch, where he routinely plays video games, freestyles along popular rappers, and chats with fellow content creators. I'm famous somehow and I'm famous. Yo, you're in trouble. Why? Oh shit. That crypto shit. On May 26th of 2021, Aiden Ross became amongst many prevalent online figures to promote a cryptocurrency scam to his fans. One by the name of MILF Token. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, it's very funny, it's very funny. See, as long as you give it a little quirky name, you can get away with promoting anything, right? After being paid what was confirmed to be a total of $200,000 for a single sponsorship, many began to question the intentions behind that of a coin like MILF. Or, you know, we could just ask Aiden himself what he thinks. Chat, by the way, that MILF Token shit I did a while back, I already told you guys, don't buy that shit. I got paid a bag to do that shit. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. I hope none of you guys actually bought it. <laughs> That's right. Just mere weeks after going in front of an audience of 75,000 teenage hype beasts, Aiden clarified he had been paid a fat bag for the promo, and that he hoped none of his fans had actually bought into it. A complete 180 on the sentiment we heard from him during the actual promo. But uh, yeah, let me uh, let me go ahead and buy let me buy a milf real quick. I want to buy one. Buy some MILF. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to buy some MILF. And I'm going to basically buy some MILF. And it's MILF. And basically, uh, what does it mean? Insufficient sons. All right. Yeah. So how do I buy the MILF? Okay. So basically, go to the website. Click uh, buy on Uniswap. Uh-huh. No, no. Click buy on Uniswap on yeah, the website. Yeah, 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 yeah. Click. Yeah. Yes. Now, US... DC, select a token, click USDC. Uh, After a seemingly brain-dead admission of guilt, it didn't take long for bigger streamers to smell blood in the water. Creators Ethan Klein and Hassan Piker were quick to level critique against Aiden. And soon enough, the two would confront the 20-year-old in a bizarre, confusing mess of an interrogation. I don't know, bro. Like, I just huh? see, like, you just don't like me. I don't know. <laughs> right. Okay. We can talk about that. I'm a human being. Like I made mistakes, but but I wanted to show you this one clip. Can I flip camera? Or, yeah, you can. Okay. I'm on a phone. Bear with me. Sorry, right. guys. Oh, this so, is fucking. This is tech, Dan. Take note of this. Shit I know. I'm here, really boy. sorry. Just watch this clip right here. This is my promo. Go I ahead. just want to say real quick. Go they ahead. wish that they never did this with me. Let me just show you why. Uh, yo. All right, chat. Uh, I got two more things to say about milk. So see, like, if I was a brand and I paid somebody to do that, I just did it horribly. I didn't know what I was doing, bro. Like, but a poorly done scam doesn't exactly negate it being a scam. If people had lost money, it would have been a pump and dump. But because the price stayed about the same, it wasn't? I don't know, it's just insane to me. You pay attention to every fucking statistic at every minute of the day. You True. saw Pathetic. that after I did that shit, it went down. So listen, it was not a scam of <laughs> pump and dump, nothing. Right? As some have been quick to point out, the defining trait of a scam cryptocurrency isn't the price alone, but the prospect of actually finding a buyer. Which, as we established earlier, is where hiring these giant influencers comes into the picture. It's pretty obvious to see at this point that although the price didn't fluctuate much, the volume definitely did on the very day Aiden promoted it. Meaning that regardless of how bad he considers the advertisement to be, he still allowed MILF scammers 
YouTubers to dump all of their coins onto his unsuspecting fan base, make a huge profit himself, and then still plead innocent because the price stayed the same. Now, I can't tell if Aiden is stupid, manipulative, or just a little bit of both. Actually, yeah, probably is that last one. Uh, yeah, and I know, I, and I and I already know you 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 probably hate me based off of like what happened with the whole milf token and stuff. But it wasn't a pump and dump. I wanted to show you this clip uh, from my live stream. Let me just show you this. I don't clip. hate you to to to. Uh... Just to clarify. No, you said I'm a piece of shit. But the very least he could do is show a sliver of accountability after it's been proven that his followers got scammed. Rather than pleading naivete, saying it couldn't possibly be a scam, and just moving on with his normal streams alongside Soldier Boy. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. But I don't want this to seem like just a shit on Aiden Ross party. Plenty of other creators are just as responsible for shilling this joke of a coin to the respective audiences too. Other creators with questionable moral compasses. You guys know I've been investing in a lot of cryptocurrency lately and one coin recently that came up I actually saw from Jake Paul as well. It's called MILF. It's insane guys. I 25 x my investment, which is just nuts. But how did people like the Paul brothers or Rice Gum even gain such a reputation in the first place? Well, I'd tell you, but I gotta go get drunk enough to deal with the second part of this video. So in the meantime, I'll leave it up to my brilliantly eloquent side piece. Take it away, babe. Hey, hey, it's me, the right opinion. Thank you, Jawbury, for introducing me wherever in this video because the ho didn't specify, but fortunately he did give me a brief on what I'm to talk about. So without further ado, let's talk about Rice Gum and the Paul Brothers, my favorite set of people and the spirit of scamming audiences. Let's do the most obvious crooks. Rice Gum and Jake Paul are accomplished kings of the YouTube rap game and part-time content creators on top of that. On the cusp of 2019, they both posted content about what are known as mystery boxes. Basically a box you don't actually know the content of when you purchase it. It's a bit of a raffle. This website was known as Mystery Brand, using branding that bears a somewhat uncanny resemblance to the Supreme logo, another company known for their high regard of the consumer. Basically we partnered with this brand uh, called Mystery Brand. Net. So basically we partnered with them because they're like the best and they have like the dopest site and they have all of the dopest products and stuff like that. Like on their site you could literally win like a Rolls Royce. Royce? Royce? You can win a bunch of Supreme stuff, you can win iPhones, iPads, all sorts of good. And we partnered with them because today I am going to spend thousands of dollars on mystery boxes and see what I get. In Jake Paul's video, he very vocally states that they are partnering with the site. Maybe too vocally, but brownie points for that much. On the other hand, Rice Gum mentions it so fleetingly in a sentence that I didn't even notice the first time before acting all curious and enticed by this enigmatic platform. And I kind of wanted to switch it up a little bit, do something different. So me and Mystery Brand actually teamed up if you don't know what it is. Basically, it's a site that has a ton of these like random mystery box. Like right here, he has like a Yeezy and Supreme and like technology, like smartphone one. I don't know. I guess you buy a mystery you open it and you get like one random either dope item or bad item it's like a mystery it's a surprise right oh and i believe like the top area is like the live winner like at this moment in time people are like you know getting random stuff like some dude just want an apple lightning to usb right. yo wow what is this strange site it's a mystery box site but it's like got all these theme boxes Whoa, that's crazy. You should definitely try opening some yourself to see what's inside them. That would be mad. Be something, man. Yo, I'm gonna try again, guys. Yo, I'm gonna just keep going at it. Why not? Oh! Yo, 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 no. This is actually a good shoe. Yo, I don't know if you guys actually like shoes, but this is a good shoe. The reason why I'm actually super surprised is because like it's like a $2,000 shoe. In both the videos, our intrepid creators receive fluctuating amounts of luck, but in each one, they seem to win more than they lose, with Rice Gum scoring multiple high-end trainers, AirPods, and a $10,000 handbag from his custom $250 box. He's got the handbag. Yo, that's a ten thousand dollar handbag. I'm about to sell it. Yo, ten thousand dollars. Yo, I'm about to sell it back. As for Jake Paul, well, in between the frantic editing, his five thousand dollar investment returned the following: Adidas Yeezys, AirPods, an iPhone XS, and whatever this was. Adidas NMD Human Race Super Rubber. Let's go, guys. 
Well, at least he's speaking in a language his viewers will understand. Now, I'm going to deduct the brownie points that I have previously awarded because Jake Paul has a very backhanded way of advertising this website. I kind of want to see what you guys as fans, like, I want you guys to go to mysteryband.net right now and play this game and tell me and tweet me or something if you guys win this, okay? Because like, I want someone to win something amazing. Guys, you just need to go there and give it a spin. Tell him what you think. He's really interested to find out what you won on the website. Both of these creators glorify gambling as a fun little game. After all, they experience startling amounts of good fortune when opening their boxes, winning items that few would take for granted. You guys can see my balance right here. I started with like half of this, and then I just kept opening stuff, got some cool stuff, and then I like sold back, so I made back some of the money. I'm up right now though, so like I've been having good luck on this site. The problem is that if everyone had the luck of these creators, then the company wouldn't be turning a profit. Rice Gum is quite explicit that he is actually making money on this website, as if it's a business model catered towards mutual income. Additionally, it seemed that some of these mystery items seemed a bit too good to be true to be an actual reward in the first place. We already spoke about the disappearing Gucci bag, but luxury cars and even a mansion listed on the website Zillow were all featured as prospective prizes for the wide-eyed patron. Further to this came plenty of other people showing their awful experiences with the company, many of whom had won items that had not been delivered or even shipped. Definitely not spending more than $100 Canadian on a scam website or- Honestly, I feel like this is the biggest scam of a site, like- It seems like the site and their mystery boxes are rigged. And not to be outdone by third-party testimony, there was an admission in their own terms of service stating that items one may not be delivered. All while the American hustlers over here were shilling out a tacky tombola to their fans. Come on, please, something nice, something nice. Oh! As always, the commentary bloodhounds could smell the bullshit from a mile away. And not long after, uploaded videos calling out our fortunate friends on their reckless promotion of a dubious website which would not be suitable for their viewers regardless of its reliability. So let's start with Jake. He responded, I posted my video on Twitter. And Jake responded very eloquently here. He said, lol, love this vid, art. I responded to him, I said, you loved being called out for selling a gambling scam to underage kids, okay? Because I just wanted to be like, you know what you're talking about. You know what you're saying, right? And he said, yes, love it. Rice Gum would go on to trade blows with H3 over the nature of the scam. They were shit responses, big surprise. The other day I posted a video where I was promoting this website. Basically my management just came to me. I was like, yo, Rice, here's this deal. Load the app or whatever, you get paid, right? I love how he describes it as just, yo, my management hooked me up. I didn't think about anything. I don't consider anything. I have no interest in saying much more about it because I'm on a time limit and I don't think it's necessary. Rice Gum and Jake Paul ripping off people isn't new. That's the point. However, this isn't just about them. I'm so, I didn't mean, I didn't want to do that. Ah. The reformed boy of vlogging, Mr. Logan Paul. By 2020, it would be safe to say that the whole excursion into the unspecified foliage was a distant memory. I say that at least as I had to look up when it even happened. But needless to say, the past is the past. Let's talk about some presents. Now, I've loved Pokemon my whole life. Literally played the games all throughout high school, made a couple of viral Pokemon videos, owned Pokemon art, and I only have one tattoo on my body. It's a Pokemon named Squirtle next to my penis. So I knew there was a lane here that I did indeed have a passion for. Like a lot of people, Logan Paul has an interest in collecting. Pokemon, especially the valuable types. Given that he has the money to spend, he's made deals before and will probably make deals again. He is widely credited with causing a spike in the popularity of Pokemon collecting, given his public, outspoken promotion of the hobby, though he hasn't done it alone. So the first thing I did was find an expert. Crazy, bro. I feel like I'm you know, delivering me drugs. This feels like I'm trafficking a kilo, but like the price is actually probably more than a That's kilo what I'm saying. by weight. Look at this, look at this. Meet Jake, a collectible guru, also known as Collectibles Guru on Instagram. He was nice enough to sell me seven of these little pieces of cardboard for $50,000. This is the Collectibles Guru, who has appeared in Logan Paul videos and has sold products to Logan Paul that he has opened on stream, including a box containing over $200,000 worth of Pokemon content. Logan has promoted this guy as a reliable seller and curator of Pokemon cards, given his apparent expertise on the matter. Jake, Jake, Collectible Guru, how much, how much could I sell these three for right now? Five, five, six K total? Between 4,200 and 4,500. We got, we got an expert in the house. Fantastic. However, although Logan only had his praises to sing for this chap, his credibility came into question after another channel, fittingly named Dumb Money Live, paid just shy of 400 grand for a set of first edition cards. Yet, this isn't exactly what they received. That one's the... not a first edition pack. <gasps> That's Wait, an what? issue. This is an unlimited pack. Oh no. Oh yeah, God. look, they're open. Yeah, no, that's oh. a major fucking issue. 
This is a resealed oh my box. God. No, in fact, what they had was a random collection of resealed cards. Hardly a satisfactory product given the expenditure. And although the collectibles guru wasn't the collector of the items sold, he had facilitated the trade and was assumed to be in a position of relative information with respect to the exchange of goods, especially given how he presented the product. However, after this incident, questions were raised over his interest in the participation within this community. To put it bluntly, money seemed to serve as the prime motivation for this man. He clearly didn't know half of what he was talking about, and yet Logan here was billing him as the go-to expert for all your Pokemon needs. And it wasn't long at all until someone else paid the price for this charlatan's rogue trading. Now, you can't directly hold Logan Paul accountable for hiring a bad egg head. However, his promotion of this person as an authority on Pokemon cards to a mostly unsuspecting and impressionable audience does raise questions about Logan's own interests, especially when he hasn't clarified since that this guy is actually clearly not the most trustworthy. Though, I have to say, in this case, it's hard to prove much as to Logan's knowledge, and although it's nowhere near the extent of well, this. Give me more, baby. What's in the box? It's a little tutorial about the failure to cherish the trust your audience bestows onto you, and maybe just a little foreshadowing of what is to come. Back to you in the basement, John. Thanks, babe. Be sure and sub to the right opinion if you haven't already, though at this point, I'm sure you're more than aware of his homoerotic escapades. In case you needed any more convincing that the illustrious Paul brothers didn't care a ton for their self-admitted child audience. Who is your audience? Who do you make your videos for? Yeah, my audience is, uh, is definitely younger. It's like eight years old to like 16 years old. And so that's where I try to like cater the, the content mm -hmm. towards. Now you know how obvious the two are when it comes to taking candy from their baby fans. With the most recent and pathetic example being another crapto currency. <laughs> Oh my god. During summer of 2021, Logan Paul and his circle of nameless henchmen suddenly began rallying behind a brand new cryptocurrency by the name of Dink Doink. The whole barrage of videos came as a shock considering uh, nobody had ever heard the name Dink Doink uttered until people like Logan started plugging the hell out of it on Twitter, Telegram, and his own podcast in front of an audience of 3 million people. Dink Doink is cleared to be the hottest fucking coin ever. I just wanted to say, keep up the good work. And if you guys do everything that you're doing right now, even more exponentially, we could go to the top of this whole fucking market, dude. Fuck yeah. Well, that's awesome to hear, Mike McJack me off. Sounds like an awesome crypto project to get behind. I mean, if you guys really believe in it and you promise it's going to the moon. Dink Doink is going to the fucking moon. You don't believe me? You don't have to. You can just be naive and dumb. It's all good. But y'all, the community, this Telegram community, we're not naive. We're not dumb. We're a fucking family. And we're gonna go to the fucking moon! I only have one question. What, what is Dink Doink? What is it? Well, let's start with the fact that it is literally worthless in every sense of the word. There is no practical utilization of this coin whatsoever at the time of me recording this. And when we look back at their website, which has been updated numerous times since I began writing this video, we can see there is still isn't much. Other than a vague project roadmap chock full of random buzzwords and crypto jargon, it looks like there aren't any real life goals for implementing this coin into society besides a few short videos, NFTs, a merch drop, more scheduled deals with creators, and an entire Dink Doink movie slated for 2022. Which, if that ever happens, we may just have to review together. The biggest consistency you may have noticed by now is this little asshole. The Dink Doink mascot, which they have you believe is the real creator of the coin. That's how they worded everything, they didn't want you knowing who was behind a project like like this, as stated by iDubbbz. Logan Paul thinks you're a fucking moron. And the guy behind this whole thing, he also thinks you're a fucking moron. The whole theme of this crypto is plausible deniability. Give us their names and their faces. Tell us. If it's legitimate, you should give us their names and their faces. If they really had something to offer and felt passionate about the token, they should have no problem being as transparent as possible about who created it and who runs the token. But instead, it's all propped up by brainless dirt sacks in an animation style that bears an eerie resemblance to South Park. You know, a show that has absolutely nothing to do with the project at hand. Tell me about the flamethrowers and the underground tunnels! Well, the flame, I wouldn't put, wouldn't put a lot of time into the flamethrower. <laughs> this was an off-the-cuff thing, and um, so we have, I have sort of like, it's sort of a, 
sort of a hobby company called The Boring Company. But if you're trying to market such a pointless, stupid coin, it makes sense to tie it back to something the buyer, the audience, recognizes. And in this case, it's via terrible animations ripping off a show and in the most cringe on funny way possible, I should add. Ding doink. Be free. Be the meme coin you were born to be. I personally hope to god these guys catch wind of it and sue the fuck out of Tree Boy over here. But see, if they call it funny and acknowledge how stupid it is, there's really no way any of this dink doink stuff can be bad, right? Well, that might be true if they weren't also making it out to be this grandiose investment worthy of your hard earned cash by posturing dink doink as the next doge, essentially. I believe in this shit. I think it's gonna go crazy. Some of my friends and uh, celebrities as well gonna get involved in episodes doing voiceovers from cartoon stuff. It's fucking dink doink, bro, and I'm ready to start sucking some dink. I'll see y'all soon. So far, it seems everyone who's promoted this project, all of Logan's friends, I should add, have done so in a way that, yes, underlines the stupidity of such a venture, but still tries to give it legitimacy in the same breath? A pretty irresponsible plug, especially when you fail to even entertain the criticisms leveled against you. For example, YouTuber CoffeeZilla, who will be coming back up in a second, has since pointed towards an interview with the alleged Dink Doink CEO, where he seemingly let the mask slip in his attempt to explain the birth of the coin. We might as well, you know, be, be honest about how this came about. I was chilling with Logan and, and we were like, what's the stupidest name we could think of for mm -hmm. like a coin, right? Mm -hmm. What's the weirdest name we could think of for like a little mascot that's like a dumb sprint? We were like, Dink Doink. Oh my God, his name's Dink Doink. <laughs> and it just came alive. Like Logan <laughs> designed the character on his phone, on Snapchat. And we thought, we didn't realize what it was at first. We were like, it's a coin called Dink Doink. And they were like, nope, that's stupid. You know, like, there, there shouldn't be a meme coin called Dink Doink. And a week later, we just kept bringing it up. We're like, Dink Doink? This came as quite the shock to general audiences who had previously been sold the notion that Logan and his friends merely came across the token on a whim and decided to go all in because they believed in it. That much wouldn't be as concerning as Logan intentionally misleading his audience into thinking he had nothing to do with the creation of the coin. It turns out the self-admitted creator and CEO of Dink Doink, who goes by the alias DD69CEO, on Telegram is actually a man by the name of Jake Broido, an individual with close ties to Logan Paul. And according to a podcast he did in Logan's living room on 420, exactly 69 days before the promotion, you not only hear this guy blowing smoke up Logan's ass for an hour, but you get to see his perspective on starting his own crypto project at some point. I want to I want to make a coin called Bible Coin yeah. and Christ Coin. Coins, by the way, are only legal if they have utility. The difference between, like, the SEC will shut you down if your coin looks and feels like a stock. That's illegal. That means it's a security. Oh. Crypto coins are supposed to have utility. They're supposed to use them. That's what makes it legal. Um, so if I can, like, get God to sign off on some, like, you know, present your Bible coins and get into heaven, what if I can't prove the utility, but I can say like, in theory, with 100,000 of these coins, you can get into heaven. So I'd say that's a little telling. I'm not saying Logan or anyone in particular has sold, but holding onto a scam coin doesn't make it any less of a scam. Just like framing it as a joke doesn't make it any less of a scam either. At the end of the day, all I can advise is to take what influencers say with a grain of salt. If you like gambling and you wanna risk losing your entire life savings on a coin called ass, I guess I can't stop you. But the problem is the way these things are marketed leads naive investors into making brash decisions with their money, thinking they could potentially get in early enough to turn a profit, all because someone they look up to said so. Logan has been extremely cryptic regarding his affiliation with the token, and that alone should worry you. These people are putting their reputations on the line for the aim of ripping money out of your hands. But trust me, we haven't even touched the most egregious of them all. My name's Frazier. My name's Jarvis. I'm Tico. I'm Ryska. I'm Nikon. And I support Save the Kids Token. 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 On Thursday, July 1st, 2021, the popular esports group FaZe Clan, known for delivering epic trick shots and gamer fuel, announced via Twitter the immediate punishment of four FaZe members, sending shockwaves throughout the internet. FaZe Jarvis, Nikon, and Tico were subsequently suspended, with 
Faze K being permanently removed from the group. Now, Faze being the center of drama is nothing new. Only this decision came right off the heels of a video published by a YouTuber named Coffeezilla, or a Coffee Break, a man dedicated to sniffing out digital scams, particularly within the crypto community. In late June of 2021, Coffee caught wind of a little coin by the name of Save the Kids, a charity token said to be donating a portion of its profits to uh, saving kids. Only instead of saving them, it was mostly scamming them. The coin was initially marketed by select members of FaZe Clan, Rice Gum, and Summer Ray, for whatever reason, as a welfare token that vowed to redistribute 1% of each transaction to a child-oriented foundation. It was later discovered that a senior talent major within FaZe, Jordan Galen, had independently recruited the aforementioned influencers to plug the project on their social media. Now, it's important to note that this was separate from FaZe. The higher-ups at the organization claimed they were not briefed on the creators Jordan had been reaching out to on his own terms. And we aren't talking about small followings here either. Each FaZe member has an audience of millions across several platforms, with Summer Rae and Rice Gum having more followers than any of them. These were giant influencers, peddling what eventually turned out to be one of the biggest scams ever reported by CoffeeZilla. Because, well, the coin's value plummeted a staggering 90% immediately following its launch. Ambassadors and early investors wasted no time in dumping their entire holdings, leaving anyone who bought in after the initial exclusive presale with a hole in their pocket and a ton of worthless crypto. Which is a massive, massive problem. So let me tell you, it was promoted by Rice Gum, all the usual suspects. There's this new crypto save the kids that's going to the moon. I'm holding it for life. And then they do this big promotion. And then the minute that everybody starts investing in this crypto, they sell all their shares. The first question anyone asked following the detriment of such a coin was how? How did any of this happen and who allowed for a charity coin to lose half its value shortly after being promoted by so many influential figures? Well, it didn't take long for people much smarter than I to start digging. CoffeeZilla teamed up with two other notable channels, some ordinary gamers and barely sociable to be exact, in an attempt to get to the bottom of such a catastrophe. As reported by Kotaku, audiences confidently pumped money into this scheme, believing their investment was protected by the high profile of those endorsing it, only to see their money disappear almost overnight. Welcome to the world of crypto, okay, where pump and dumps happen on an hourly basis. Countless naive traders being misled by their favorite creators meant someone needed to pay, and it wouldn't be long until the day of retribution was upon them. What went wrong and who was responsible for what? Embarking on a confusing and presumably frustrating scavenger hunt for the culprits, CoffeeZilla uncovered a key bit of information regarding the nature of the dumps, an anti-whale restriction that had been written into the very code of Save the Kids. In crypto, a whale is a single individual or entity that holds a large portion of a coin. So naturally, measures are typically put in place to ensure that one party cannot dump their entire load at once, crashing the coin value and letting the price drop to nothing. Well, in the case of Save the Kids, it seemed the original anti-whale mechanism had been changed from a 24-hour restriction to a one-day restriction and then finally to one minute, meaning whales, or big holders of Save the Kids, were allowed to dump large quantities of the token over the period of just a minute. The very code had been manipulated in favor of the influencers. As more whales sold, the value dropped, leaving the poor fans holding the bag. The one aspect these scammers didn't take into account was that all transactions are verifiable on the blockchain. And if you have the wallets of several of these members, you can cross-reference them with the dates and times they bought into a coin, sold a coin, everything. Which is precisely what led these three men along their investigation. Using this wallet, we simply cross-check it at the time of giveaway, see that they got the winnings, and then check who sent it. We then check if that address has saved the kids tokens and other tokens that these people have promoted in the past. And it does. Here's the save the kids tokens. And here's the Safe Galaxy tokens, which incidentally, he got from the Safe Galaxy deployer, meaning he's not just some random person. He's clearly someone with influence. That's how these tokens do it. They give free tokens to the influencers 
from the deployer wallet. I think it's important to know for the sake of documentation that not all the players here were equally as responsible. Yes, promoting the coin in the first place carries questionable moral obligations, but actually dumping everything for a quick profit is what really determines guilt in my book. And I have to say that FaZe, Nico, and Jarvis were not nearly as irresponsible with their tokens as K. Probably why they only received a mere suspension rather than an outright ban. Even Ricegum's wallet seemed to prove more general stupidity than malice. And hell, I can't help but feel bad for Tekken. The guy got lumped in with everybody else, but is still holding all of his Save the Kids tokens last I heard. He refused to sell a single coin even as he saw himself losing money as the price sank. And he even bought more after the coin fell. This shit's really, really, really fucking with me. I'm not looking for empathy or sympathy or like feel some kind of way about me. Not at all. I just get so mad that I feel like I was never treated as an individual. I never sold a single fucking token. I bought in more after the coin was fucking up. I never worked on this coin. I never planned anything. I have not even spent five minutes working on it. And it's the hand on my heart. I swear on my family. The only reason I was a part of it was because there was a charity aspect. And I understand now, you know, obviously that's a huge mistake. Obviously looking back at it, you're not gonna believe me because it's like, oh, it was this. From my perspective, the way I looked at it was charity. He didn't deserve this level of backlash, and I sincerely hope he's in a better place today now that his name has been cleared. Although the others may have varying levels of responsibility, the investigation led by Coffee and some ordinary gamers keeps going back to K, who traced the activity of his crypto wallet and deduced that among being involved in various pump and dump schemes in the past, he had allegedly participated in giveaway fraud, exposing K as a way more conniving trick Traitor than he pretended to be. When five wallets win two or more of your giveaways and multiple of them are getting paid from your main wallet, it starts looking pretty suspicious. Take for instance, that second wallet on screen here, OX49A4. It won three giveaways from K. It was also paid $5,000 from K's main wallet. And then, oops, what's this? It also bought into the Save the Kids Pre-sale, probably a coincidence, I'm sure. All of these people making videos think that they know the truth and that they know who's responsible when they just don't. So this is the truth, all right? He sounds like he's crying, but I don't see any tears. Almost as if he only regrets getting caught. I scam everybody, all right? I alter the code right before launch, resulting in six figure profits for me. There we go, that, that's more accurate. After days of what I can only imagine was a PR nightmare, Fraser K, formerly known as Phase K, released probably one of the weakest, shortest, and most manipulative apologies I've seen since uh, earlier this year. In under two minutes, K cuts right to the point, pleading innocence through a wall of crocodile tears as he points the finger at another mysterious entity pulling all the strings behind the scenes. Significant evidence which confirms that a dishonest person abused his trust with me to scam everybody. This person gained my trust and the trust of my friends while still encouraging us to be the public faces of his scheme. See, Kay also lost money on Save the Kids, all as a result of putting his trust into the wrong person, as many in the comments were quick to take his word and give their favorite creator the benefit of the doubt. Unfortunately for Kay though, this little venture had scam written all over it, and you can't spell scam without Sam. <laughs> I just want to hold What's up, hand. Man? What's up? No, no, it's just a joke, it's a prank. No. Born on March 26, 1989, British reality TV star Sam Pepper has been an absolute beacon of controversy since he arrived on the internet in the early 2010. Bursting onto the YouTube scene with crudely thrown together prank videos, he soon began to gain notoriety with each new upload. In retrospect, Sam's prank videos were about as problematic as you can imagine. Actually, problematic might not even be a strong enough word for someone who casually depicted sexual assault on camera for a good chunk of their career. My man literally got famous for videos like making out with random girls prank, delivering a human being prank, grabbing girls asses prank, truly reprehensible behavior that he continued up to his killing my best friend prank. 
With the nature of the video being so graphic, I'm afraid I can't even show it. In the video, a masked pepper kidnaps Sam Goldback, Goldbach, whatever, and Colby Brock, the latter of whom was in on the prank alongside Pepper, who are parked at an unknown location, shoving Goldbach into the trunk of the car with a bag over his head. Brock helps Pepper tie up Goldback and take him to a rooftop, where he is forced to watch Pepper shoot Brock, leaving Goldbach in tears. Let me reiterate, he traumatized his own friend for the sake of getting YouTube clicks. He knew how bad stunts like these would make him look, in fact he leaned into the whole bad boy shtick as time went on, even as multiple sexual assault allegations were leveled against the prankster. Eventually it was just too much to bear, so he neglected his channel in exchange for a blossoming career on TikTok, where he resigns today, making prank content for a whole new audience who knows nothing about his past antics and, more notably, sexual harassment allegations. I cannot stress enough how bad of a person Sam Pepper has always been. He is not someone to trust with anything, which is why it's a shock to me that FaZe Clan would be so willing as to bring him on board. For years now, fans have speculated Sam Pepper's involvement in FaZe, with some viewers alleging he's a camera guy for K who occasionally helps out with video ideas. This wouldn't be a shock considering Sam has a tendency of hanging around big influencers, but the water only gets muddier when you consider his recent involvement in cryptocurrencies. According to CoffeeZilla, Sam Pepper has gained so much of a reputation among crypto circles that he's been dubbed Scam Pepper for the amount of schemes and rug pulls he's orchestrated throughout his career. So it's a little bit of a red flag to see Sam randomly selling his Tesla and fleeing the country following Kay's accusations that he had in fact played an important role in Save the Kids. We're gonna have to take a step back for a second and speak about somebody that was key in all of this and that is Sam Pepper. And I support Save the Kids, Save the Kids, Save the Kids. Sam was somebody that I trusted to help with this token. I met Sam around four years ago when I moved into Banks' house. He was deep in the creative scene of LA and I found myself hanging out with him more and more. Sam was hired by FaZe for a short time as their head of content. This led me to being around him more and more, but uh, that didn't last for long as my YouTube channel back then was blowing up. Um, he quickly saw an opportunity for himself, I guess, and left them and convinced me to give him a percentage of my YouTube revenue in returns for being the brains of my content and doing everything. After a second apology video, Kay does little to actually take accountability, and more to brush the accusations of malpractice onto his former cameraman and friend. When really, just coming clean about his involvement would do so much more for his reputation than continuously digging his grave even deeper, because it, CoffeeZilla didn't let up, releasing a whole separate video and shining a light on a few glaring holes in Kay's testimony. We know that Sam and Kay both have had some kind of shady involvement in the coin. It's evident that Sam pressured the developers to change the whaling code at last minute, making it possible for massive investors to dump their holdings on unsuspecting small traders. Though it's also been proven that Kay was the one to sell first, a whole 30 minutes before Sam to be exact, basically confirming that no one in this equation is in any way trustworthy and that those behind the coin had the intention to hit the deck as early as possible, abandoning all of their coins in exchange for a couple thousand bucks, which really kind of pales in comparison into putting your entire reputation in jeopardy, but you know, maybe that's just me. me I, I'm a broke idiot. What do I know? Yeah, I mean, I, you got to imagine for people who have entire pers personalities built around mansions and supercars, right? You're really risking your peak, your 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 great career on 30,000, which is a lot of money, but it's certainly not enough to warrant putting that much risk on you, you know? More than anything, I think schemes like Save the Kids underline more glaring issues within the current crypto market. The minimal regulations surrounding such a concept is what really leads to so many people getting hurt. As we know, many of these casual investors were just fans of FaZe and genuinely wanted to make a difference by investing in a charity token. As noted by CoffeeZilla, we tend to forget actual faces and lives at stake behind the scenes of these rug pulls. Why do you want to buy? Because I want to help participate for charity, help people with charity and earn some money as well. Because being on a charity coin and getting rich at the same time is just so satisfying. They don't all go in for the same reasons. They're not just numbers on a chart. These were real people 
that this affected. Setting aside masterminds like Sam Pepper and Fraser K, there are regular people being screwed over the most, simply for not knowing enough about what they're getting into. And you really can't blame them for that. Cryptocurrency is complicated. I barely understand anything past the basics myself. And I can totally understand why viewers would be quick to buy into a token their favorite creator promised them was going to the moon. These guys always have to state that they believe in the project. But as iDub said, it's because it would be illegal for you to not believe in it. Make no mistake that most of the creators promoting these terrible investments know exactly what they're doing. They simply don't care enough about the fallout so long as they're able to make a profit in the meantime. And until suitable regulation comes and the SEC cracks down on these ghouls, I'm afraid altcoins will just continue being the grift that keeps on grifting. So what are you waiting for? Join the Nickel family and revolutionize in the world of cryptocurrency. Keep on keep running.